Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining the talk. I'm Kevin Wan. Uh, actually, uh, unfortunately, uh, Ying is not able to travel here, so I, I will deliver the talk. Yeah, so um, just a little bit to uh, introduce myself about my background. I actually uh, was one of the uh, uh, earliest uh, uh, Kubernetes contributor and maintainer from China in the early days back to 2015, and uh, I'm recently working on the uh, Kubeage project as well as uh, the other two uh, CNCF projects, which is called uh, the Volcano, it's a batch scheduler, and also a, a Kiamata for multi-cluster management. And uh, I'm uh, uh, also help promoting cloud-native technologies, uh, mainly in China, but also uh, the other regions as well. Uh, I have been uh, organizing several uh, uh, community events and uh, at Huawei Cloud, I'm the leader of uh, the Cloud Native Open Source team. Yeah, uh, you can find me on uh, GitHub or uh, uh, Twitter. Okay, uh, so just a, le a little bit uh, background about the uh, edge computing. So uh, we know that today the network is kind of more and more developed uh, all right there and a uh, lot of uh, people exploring the path to run the, their applications on the edge to achieve better like latency and also like to deal with the, uh, the offline autonomy and also like to uh, help improve their data privacy sort of things. Uh, but there do have a lot of uh, change, uh, a challenge. For example, the network, it's uh, totally different with this uh, in the data center network, you know, it's the uh, over, uh, it's actually over the internet between the central cloud to the, uh, especially the edge. And the, the hardware, the underlying architecture is uh, very, very different. In the data center, we got a very typical uh, servers, right, with a kind of certain uh, model of the uh, 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 of the types but on the edge there are more like uh, arm based uh, edge server for example and uh, there are a lot of more other architecture uh, hardwares and also there are a lot of um, uh, challenges to using like the GPU resources on the edge so the resources on the edge today it's kind of still uh, uh, expensive uh, comparing to uh, those in the data center uh, but how to deal with the, uh, the the requirement that people do want to run applications on the edge? That's why we build this uh, Cubage project. So just to give a very uh, high level uh, overview of the motivation. So actually, uh, Cubage is trying to uh, bring Kubernetes as well as the uh, cloud native technologies to the uh, edge computing scenario, uh, focusing on the applications and also the resources and the data and the services collaboration between the cloud and edge. Uh, we know that in the cloud, in the data center today, we have uh, very much uh, uh, mature services, a lot of uh, capabilities we can use, but on the edge, it's kind of uh, uh, still in the uh, starting uh, stage. Uh, that's why that's why uh, we also uh, bring this project with open source uh, donated to CNCF to make it really uh, joint uh, development uh, in, in the community. Yeah, so uh, just to also give an overview about this uh, project journey. Actually, the Qubit project was started in uh, 2018, one of the earliest project, open source project working on the edge computing, especially uh, with the uh, uh, cloud native with the container technologies. And uh, besides we uh, adding more and more features to this project, actually we are keep exploring a lot of uh, kind of traditional uh, use case, traditional industries to uh, embarrass to adopt cloud native technology. So that's kind of very interesting. For example, in uh, 2020, we got a very large scale adoption in the highway in China. So actually, in that time, it's already uh, managing 100,000 edge servers, uh, definitely with multiple uh, clusters. But the total 
uh, scale today is still very large. Yeah, and also um, during the uh, year of 2020, we uh, added a lot of feature and started the uh, some of the uh, sub projects to help provide uh, kind of uh, more tailored feature to uh, different scenarios. And you can find that that actually we have a sub project called Sedna to to enhance the AI workload collaborating between uh, Azure and the cloud. And we have the uh, project Azure Mesh to deal with the data plan uh, communication between the applications on diff in different Azure network. And also we got very uh, uh, interesting uh, user to actually use uh, Cubage in the in their vehicle to manage the uh, applications to kind of bring the uh, smart carbon uh, concept to actually uh, make it the vehicle able to do software layer OTA instead of uh, firm layer OTA. Yeah, and also we got a very interesting uh, uh, use case that uh, actually some of the academic the uh, run container technology, uh, containers, the uh, containerized the services in their low orbit satellite. You know that satellite, it's a little bit different to the kind of typical age. It's moving very fast. It, it takes like, it has only like uh, six to 10 minute time window uh, each time to get uh, stay online while the other uh, other times offline. And also uh, we keep uh, working with the community to uh, do the uh, large scale scalability test and also the uh, security auditing stuff. So currently we support uh, 100,000 uh, age nodes inside the one cluster. So it's kind of uh, extended the uh, vanilla Kubernetes scalability, uh, though the the usage is a little bit different because in uh, with the age computing scenario, uh, you don't need uh, expect all the node always online, yeah. Um, so uh, just uh, to give a brief overview of the uh, uh, architecture, how Cubage make it happen, uh, we know that actually uh, Kubernetes is designed for data center, right? The uh, it requires at least one gigabyte to to run a very simple Kubernetes cluster and. Uh, also, the network between the uh, control plan and the node need to be very kind of stable, very low latency, right? And every time the node, the kubelet start up, it need to wait uh, for the connection with the uh, API server, basically. Uh, that's why we, we went, uh, to went into the uh, path that we decided to run actually the node component, the kubelet on the edge. And uh, with uh, some of the uh, uh, lightweight op optimization, uh, we requested the uh, we reduced the, the uh, memory consumption to down to like uh, 70 megabytes to 80 megabytes. And we also bring the uh, node level data persistency to make the a node able to work uh, when it's offline and able to recover without connection uh, with the control plan. And uh, uh, the the connection between the cloud core, uh, basically the control plan and then edge core, the node, the, uh, node part, it's actually kind of uh, re-implemented uh, this the watch mechanism over uh, WebSocket. Uh, so that, that enables uh, the, uh, uh, the, the whole architecture survive over very uh, bad quality uh, network. And also for the IoT uh, devices, actually, uh, we know that there are a lot of uh, device uh, talking uh, with different uh, IoT protocol, right? Uh, but uh, people really want to decouple their uh, application development with the uh, uh, the protocol. That's why we also bring the uh, device mapper layer to kind of um, provide an option uh, to define all the uh, device data uh, with standard message. So uh, your application is able to like access the device status, uh, access the device data uh, with the standard message. You don't need to integrate the uh, device protocol. 
and a little bit into more details that how it's happening without changing the uh, the control plan. Actually, uh, people are still able to kind of get full uh, Kubernetes experience on the on the cloud in, uh, from the API server. Actually, what we uh, did in the Kubeages is that we uh, hooked the step. Uh, after the scheduler made decision and then the kubelet spin up containers. So in kubeage actually when a scheduler makes decision, it's the cloud core to fetch all the uh, updates from the pod and find the, uh, the right node, corresponding node to run that pod and the pod will be sent to the basically the, uh, the connection between the right, uh, the con cloud core and the right uh, edge core. And the edge core itself will persist the uh, definition of the pod uh, at the node level in the SQLite and then start, start the container. So with this, it's enab it enables the, uh, the node to run like the vanilla uh, pod. And also, even if the the connection is uh, kind of uh, broken, uh, the cloud core is able to to recover the pod from the local uh, storage, basically the SQLite. Yeah. Uh, so just uh, uh, give some of the updates of this uh, project recent uh, last year. Uh, one of the thing we have been working on is about we uh, really. In, in, improving the design and implementation to decouple the application development with the, the IoT devices, the Leaf devices. Yeah, so uh, so the, the main idea is make actually the device as a service so your application can really uh, interact with the device just like you interacting with the Kubernetes service. Yeah, and the, for the the DMI, the device management interface itself brings the uh, more possibility to customize your uh, device lifecycle management, especially to discover whether your uh, kind of device support like uh, OTA of your uh, uh, firm, for example, and also uh, uh, if you want to do some more advanced usage like virtualizing your uh, device, that's possible. The implementation is kind of all uh, fall into the uh, the mapper uh, implementation. Yeah, and uh, then uh, uh, when your application run, it just uh, communicate with the mapper to fetch the data. And what we are uh, doing uh, this year is actually we want to kind of provide more uh, automated functionality for the data plan. So basically enables user to uh, define rules to like uh, tell the system to forward your device data to some of uh, the backend, for example, time-based uh, time, uh, based, uh, uh, database, yeah. And also we already uh, provide some of the implementation according to the new device architecture as an, uh, as an example. And uh, you are able to implement your own according to uh, this reference implementation. And for the uh, SIG networking, the, the data plan basically, um, uh, last year actually the, uh, the edge mesh have kind of single point of failure. Uh, basically, the the edge mesh server uh, uh, during the past releases we refact we refact uh, refactored the whole architecture, uh, so it's now uh, kind of uh, adaptive. It, it will automatically uh, choose one of the edge mesh agent as a kind of uh, the helper node to uh, to forward the 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 control. Uh, information, yeah, and also uh, you can find that actually there are kind of multiple layer concept. The underlying, uh, underlying that actually, uh, if your pod kind of need to uh, talk with another pod across the different uh, private network, uh, we have the P two P layer to help you turn between uh, build turn between these two network, and. Uh, 
Uh, then uh, starting from like the uh, cluster API, the service name, it's actually the uh, similar experience with vanilla Kubernetes. And also we have the node level uh, DNS re resolution. So it enables you to, uh, to, to still provide uh, serv service uh, when even when the edge nodes are offline. Yeah, and for the uh, AI SIG, the uh, as you know, Sedna is the project uh, to help you uh, simplify the uh, the AI workload collaboration between cloud and edge. We currently provide four mode uh, of the uh, inference and the learning. So, uh, especially in the recent uh, release, we provide multi edge uh, inference. So that enables you to do more advanced uh, uh, inference. And for the learning, uh, besides, uh, most of the people may know about uh, federated learning, uh, but besides that, uh, with uh, those running on edge, the data collection is kind of sometimes very uh, hard or takes a long time. So incremental learning, uh, learning and also the lifelong learning with uh, knowledge base is very important and very useful in that case. Uh, currently, uh, Sedna project already uh, provide uh, support with the uh, AI frameworks like TensorFlow, PyTorch, uh, and the, the other ones. Yeah, uh, so for the uh, robotic SIG, it's actually, uh, there are a lot of discussion there. And the recent updates is that they're going to be a new project to uh, simplify the remote control of the uh, robot. Uh, so uh, this is just a, a proposal currently to uh, explain the whole architecture and we kind of want to uh, achieve like the, uh, for example, to uh, people to customize the slider of sensitivity adjustment and also to bring like the RTA, uh, RTC based uh, remote view of the, from the robot perspective, uh, you can uh, uh, access the uh, pull request address to take a look with more details. And uh, another spe uh, aspect I want to uh, bring is that uh, security is definitely very important in every open source project. So in the last year, we finished the, the uh, third party aud uh, security auditing with the uh, OSTIF and also the uh, ADA uh, logics. So uh, you can now find the, uh, the full audit uh, report with the QR code there. And also uh, Cubage is one of the uh, CNCF project uh, already uh, passed the SOLSA uh, verification and it's now uh, level four. And also uh, we uh, integrated the, the fuzzing uh, testing for this project to uh, to help aut automatically uh, discover some of the potential uh, securability issue. Uh, and also uh, in the last year, we uh, provide a, a threat model and a security protection uh, document to help people understand when you deploying uh, Cubage, what kind of thing you need to take care about, especially where can be kind of potential attack point you need to especially uh, add more uh, kind of uh, product to that. Yeah, you can also uh, scan the QR code for more details. And also uh, for the community currently, we have our own uh, security, uh, security vulnerability uh, management process and that we already deal with a lot of uh, CVE uh, issues. Uh, if you uh, found any uh, potential security issue, you can just uh, refer to this uh, process to report and uh, uh, keep track until it get fixed. Uh, I also want to uh, uh, introduce some of the case study. Uh, the, I think the most interesting uh, thing in the Cubage community is that it really uh, bring a lot of uh, industry to uh, cloud native. So on the right, you can find that there are 
a lot of industries already using uh, cubage uh, in production grade, like the uh, community, uh, the China Highway electronic tolling system, as well as the uh, Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge, which is a bridge eternal system. And we do have some of the adopter uh, in the Europe to use cubage to manage the uh, uh, public transportation. And uh, I think another uh, very interesting thing worth mentioning is that a lot of these uh, uh, the case are come from the uh, community. There are a lot of uh, partner, a lot of vendor providing uh, the commercial cubage solution to help their customer to to build their own uh, platform. So we think that's a very important kind of metric of a healthy uh, community. Yeah, and uh, uh, here I just want to dive a little uh, bit more about the uh, two of this case study. One is the, uh, the low orbit satellite. So it's actually, we know that the, currently the, there are a lot of commercial satellite running and in a very low orbit, right? And also, the uh, as I said, the satellite is moving very fast. It's kind of different with the fixed location age. So network challenge can be even uh, even critical. And you you got like uh, eight to ten times per day to have this satellite online, and each time window only uh, six to ten uh, minutes. And uh, with the cubage, uh, the academic is actually uh, managing kind of the small uh, uh, AI model uh, in the satellite to do some like uh, uh, easy inference. For example, to filter some of the uh, picture because the picture may just uh, uh, capture uh, the cloud, right? The cloud doesn't contain anything but the people may want to do some analysis for uh, agriculture sort of things. And also uh, when once they get the meaningful picture uh, stored in the satellite, uh, when, the, uh, when the satellite come back online in the, during the time window, it start transferring the, the picture back and the, the ground control center will run the large model uh, AI model to do more accurate, more heavy load uh, AI analysis. And also actually this enables the satellite to uh, enables the user to kind of up upgrade the applications on the satellite. We know that it's, uh, once you launch it, uh, it, the satellite run into the orbit, it's kind of you are never able to touch it physically. So remote update is definitely another very uh, important topic. And we also with the joint inference, uh, it saved a lot of the bandwidth uh, between the satellite and the, and on the edge. It, so it saves the battery and it, it kind of extend the uh, life cycle of ser uh, satellite uh, providing service. Uh, another uh, use case is that uh, we actually, uh, with Cubage, to help uh, adopt cloud native technology on the uh, offshore oil field. So for oil field, it's actually uh, kind of more uh, complicated scenario with uh, uh, for the security issue, for uh, also for the um, the device management. There are a lot of kind of uh, sensors need to uh, clap the uh, the data, and uh, they need to have the AI AI model to filter the data to analyze uh, to analyze where there is any uh, potential risk uh, for this uh, oil field. So uh, with Cubage, it's quite easy to uh, help people to manage the containerized applications, and also to uh, easy to deal with the camera stream, also with the, uh, the data from the sensors. Yeah. All right, uh, so I think the, uh, the actually there are more uh, of the uh, use cases, but uh, I, I won't go into much details. I, I just want to mention that all 
uh, this achievement uh, 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 re replies on, uh, relies a lot of the uh, community effort. So uh, from this, you can see actually we keep growing uh, in the community to get more uh, contributor involved, and also uh, Huawei as one of the uh, the starting company. Uh, actually, during the last year, uh, we send more people working on this project, but the community grow even faster. So that's the exciting thing. And also today, we have uh, a lot of uh, community uh, partners as well as the end users, including the academics and the uh, research organizations. So. Uh, in the slide, you can find that there are uh, hardware designer and IoT uh, companies, the IT service providers, as well as the telcos, the cloud service providers, and also the research and the uh, research and the academics. So uh, we think that also uh, very important to have a kind of diverse uh, community. All right, uh, just a, a little bit more about the future of this project. So today, uh, Cubage is kind of not limited to a single repo or a single framework. For the core part of the uh, framework, uh, our goal is to make it more mature, more secure to support larger scale uh, management between the cloud and the edge. Uh, but on top of that, uh, as you know, that there are kind of uh, a lot of uh, scenarios varies with uh, with each other. Uh, we are going to have more like a dedicated uh, scenario based uh, toolkit. Uh, for example, the Sedna is the one uh, more likely focusing on the AI collaboration between Cloud Edge, and we are going to have the uh, Audi kit uh, on top of the. Uh, DMI interface, DMI inter uh, framework to simplify the IoT application development. And also we are going to have the uh, robotics kit, which is kind of more advanced. It takes uh, usage, uh, use of the, like the edge mesh, the Senna, and as well as the IoT kit. And we are kind of expecting to have more. So if any of you have any idea, please feel free to come discuss with us and uh, let's make it happen in the community. And for the online, uh, the idea is that actually uh, the first day the project gets started, we uh, support multiple uh, architecture. Uh, so you can find out today like the x86 and the arm 32 and also the arm 64 are already supported and this year we're going to provide the official support on risk 5 hardware and from the uh, operating system level actually last year we also provide the official support uh, with android so quite interesting and uh, this year we're going to provide support with uh, uh, the windows and also, uh, besides kind of the current managing uh, nodes on the edge, uh, we are exploring the path to provide the uh, cluster management on the edge for uh, some of the use case, they have kind of more resource on the edge. Yeah, and also uh, regarding the uh, currently a lot of uh, people joining the community, especially providing uh, applications, providing their own platform distributions. Uh, this year we're going to have the conformance testing uh, for multiple layers to make sure uh, users are able to choose kind of any of the hardware uh, together with the uh, platform distribution and to, together with the kind of upper layer uh, platform integrated. Yeah, uh, that's all about the material. I want to call the the slogan from the CNCF website that let's work together to make cloud native ubiquitous. Thank you. Uh, uh, any any questions? Yeah, I have my uh, colleague in the back uh, with the. Uh, 
very few T-shirts. So if anyone asks a question, you, you might get one. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I oh, guess yeah. there will be a question in some people's mind, uh, like um, in order to contribute to this project, uh, do we need um, like us to ha have our own specific hardware to help contribute? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. uh, in general, other projects, they have a more um, uh, general platform that everyone can have, uh, but Cubedge, it's could require some uh, like distributed uh, devices, although mm -hmm. small, right? Is that required? Uh, that, that's a very good question. So, so uh, let me repeat, uh, repeat it, the, the question for online uh, audiences. The question is: the, Does Cubage require uh, some specific hardware for the development? Uh, actually, if you are uh, working on the kind of uh, platform, the framework layer of Cubage, the answer is no. Uh, so we also run tests with the uh, cloud servers to kind of uh, mock the environment and we uh, use some of the other projects to kind of in inject the network issue to kind of uh, simulate uh, the network between the cloud and edge. But uh, uh, actually you don't need any special uh, hardware to do the development. Uh, a little bit different thing is about the IoT part. If you do want to develop with some uh, certain, for example, the sensors, uh, you, you you might need to have one of that. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, it's just the general hardware. Cool. Thank you. And yeah. So my question is also hardware related. What kind of IoT uh, mm -hmm. hardware is supported, like uh, boards, Raspberry Pi, uh, Arduino, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and so on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just let me go back to this architecture page. So actually, uh, uh, in this page, you can find that there's a kind of edge where it's actually a node, and uh, these are kind of the the uh, leaf devices or uh, IoT devices. For the node, the, the I think the the requirement is like uh, you need at least one hundred megabytes for the operating system, uh, one hundred megabytes for Cubage, basically the edge core and the container runtime. If you use container D or CIO, it takes like thirty megabytes, and uh, that's about it. And uh, the uh, C CPU uh, requirement is quite low, so you are able to run it on Raspberry Pi. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, thanks for the great talk. Just uh, a question about this satellite use case. So, uh, mm -hmm. how do you manage the software upgrades? Let's imagine that the satellite comes into the connection with the base station. Mm -hmm, there is an mm -hmm. upgrade and it goes bad, right? And it takes all the six minutes where the satellite can be visible. And yeah. then basically until the next time you're going to have a broken uh, satellite software or uh, how, how is this managed? Yeah, for the, uh, it, it, this is a very uh, good question for the application upgrade. It, it actually takes time, right? It's like because uh, uh, the bandwidth between the satellite and the ground station is kind of limited. And they do have like two paths. One is for the uh, control signals, uh, like the uh, if checking whether this satellite is back online or not. And another channel is kind of for the data exchange, especially for uh, kind of uh, sending the pictures back and that they also can send some of the data to the satellite. So currently the, the uh, the application upgrade, basically the container image downloading, uh, goes into that path. But it it actually uh, takes uh, time to get the image fully downloaded. So the kind of the practice that is uh, people try to uh, avoid big upgrade of the uh, container image. They can uh, upgrade uh, the little bit like the. Uh, the turning of the uh, parameters and of the, some of the configs, yeah. 
And also, we know that uh, the container image is, is layered, so if your diff is not that uh, big, it, it don't take much time. Yeah. Okay, thank you.